fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let go, big fella. I am silver. Hey! The valley town of Fairview in the heart of Colorado's gold mining area was stifling hot at high noon. People remained indoors as much as possible. And in the sheriff's office, a deputy sat half asleep until Sheriff Matt Neely entered. Hey. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What in tarnation? Wake up. Oh, Sheriff, I, I wasn't asleep, but you startled me the way you came in. You'll or... be more than startled when you see this. Uh, what is it? A letter? Yes, I just picked it up at the post office. Came from Cheyenne, Wyoming on this morning's stage. Cheyenne, huh? Well, what's so startling about it? You've had other letters from the Cheyenne Marshal? Marshal Green's a friend of yours. This He's letter's been... not from Marshal Green. It's from the Lone Ranger. Oh, the Lone Ranger? Great Scott, I didn't know you knew him, Sheriff. I don't. Well, why'd he write to you then? He says the bank here in Fairview is going to be robbed. What? How's he know? Well, he didn't say, but he seems to know all about it. According to this letter, a crook by the name of Dial Durkin plans to clean out the bank on the 15th of this month. Dial Durkin? I never heard of him. The Lone Ranger sent this handbill with the letter. Tells all about Dial Durkin. He's wanted by the law for a dozen bank jobs and a couple of murders. Where? North of here in Cheyenne, other places in Wyoming. Seems he can open almost any safe. He has a way of working the combination. Yeah, I've heard that some crooks could do that. Let's see that handbill, Sheriff. Here you are. Uh, Did you tell Bank of Comedy about this? Well, not yet. There's two weeks before the 15th, and I want to do some checking before I worry Mr. Carmody about it. This handbill gives a full description of Dial Durkin. Yeah, I noticed that. He's six feet tall, lean, and with thick black hair and mustache. It says he smokes cigars. Yeah, I'll read the description. As I see it, Sheriff, Durkin can't rob the bank without coming to Fairview. Well, hardly. Well, all we got to do is watch for him, and if he comes here, arrest him and turn him over to your friend Marshal Green in Cheyenne. Well, that's what I plan to do. But in the meantime, I'm going to ride to Cheyenne and have a talk with Jim Green. He probably knows more about Dial Durkin than that handbill tells. It's a long ride to Cheyenne. Well, two days on a good horse. And when are you going? I'll start first thing in the morning. Meanwhile, don't say anything about this to Banker Comedy. He ought to know about it, Sheriff. Plenty of time to tell him after I get back from Cheyenne. A few days after receiving the letter of warning, Sheriff Matt Neely visited his friend Marshal Green in Cheyenne. After welcoming the sheriff, the marshal read the letter carefully, then said... 
I tell you, Matt, there's no accounting for the way the Lone Ranger learns things like this. You know him, don't you, Marshal? Well, I've talked to him a few times. In fact, he was here in Cheyenne last week. He came to my house late at night to ask if I knew what kind of cigars Dial Durkin smokes. Why? Well, he and Tonto's been following the trail for some time. They picked up several half-smoked cigars. Oh? The Lone Ranger showed them to him. They were the same brand as the one that we found near the safe after Durkin robbed the Cheyenne Bank. Then the Lone Ranger must be on Durkin's trail. That afternoon, while the sheriff rode south on the return trip to Fairview, the Lone Ranger and Tonto guided their horses through the Laramie Mountains, about 30 miles west of Cheyenne. They traveled slowly, following hoof marks that were barely discernible, until the masked man suddenly drew rein and said, Oh, right in, Tonto. Oh, fella. Easy. Oh, easy. Here's another cigar. Masabi, you hear that? Yes, there's a horse just ahead of us around the bend. Easy, city, big fella. Come on, Silver. Come on, let's go. Silver leaped ahead like an arrow from a bow. The Lone Ranger rounded the bend well in advance of Tonto, and at last, after many days of following the trail, saw Dial Durkin. The outlaw looked over his shoulder, recognized the masked man, and spurred his horse cruelly. While riding at breakneck speed, Durkin opened fire. Come on, Silver. The Lone Ranger leaned low and kept his guns holstered. Durkin fired again in desperation as the big white stallion gained rapidly. Keep firing, Durkin. Two more shots will empty your gun. I'll kill you. One more, Durkin. Durkin knew his freedom depended on the last shot in his gun and held his fire. Each second brought the Lone Ranger closer. He was within ten yards of the outlaw, and a moment later, less than five yards separated the straining horses. This is the end, Durkin. Durkin looked back, his face livid with rage. I'll kill you. As Durkin leveled his gun for another shot, the Lone Ranger fired. <laughs> Durkin's gun was smashed by the masked man's bullet. Now we'll close in. Come on, Silver. An added burst of speed brought Silver alongside the outlaw's horse. Rain in or I'll shoot. Uh, hold your fire. Oh, hold it. Hold, hold it. Silver. Hold it. Easy. Hold. Steady now. Uh, my hands are up. What are you going to do with me? I'm going to turn you over to Marshal Green in Cheyenne. It was after dark when Marshal Green took charge of Durkin, locked him in a cell, then joined the masked man and Tonto as they prepared to mount their horses behind the jail. Well, once more, I'm indebted to you, and so is the bank for the recovery of the cash Dial Durkin stole. All but $100 of it was in his saddlebags. I'm glad to hear that. Now, with all that cash in his possession, I can't see why Durkin was planning another bank job. Was he planning another? Why, sure, the one in Fairview. You know about that one? No, I don't, Marshal. You must know about it. You wrote and told Sheriff Neely that Durkin planned to rob the Fairview Bank on the 15th of this month. I saw the letter. A letter I wrote? Yes. Sheriff Neely's a friend of mine. He was here in Cheyenne today with a letter signed by the Lone Ranger. Oh, I didn't write it. I'd like to know who did. And so would I. And I'm going to try to find out. Well, let me know if there's anything I can do to help you. I'd appreciate it if you'd keep secret the fact that Durkin's in jail. At least don't tell Sheriff Neely. Right. Adios. Adios. Easy, 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 Let's go, Tonto. Come on, Silver. Let's go. A few days later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto camped in a woods near Fairview. And each day after that, Tonto went into town. He remained as unobtrusive as the other Indians in the community. He spent most of his time seated on the steps of the sheriff's office. While pretending to doze, he remained alert, but heard nothing of importance. <laughs> Meanwhile, John Carmody, the banker, rode out of town one evening. He traveled by a devious route to a small cabin. Ho, oh, oh, ho there, ho, oh, steady. Dismounting, he entered without knocking and was greeted by a short, heavily built man. Evening, Carmody. Hello, Benny. Is everything set for the bank robbery? It is, as far as I'm concerned. How about you? Do you have the gray-haired wig? Yeah. <laughs> I really looked like an old man with that thing on my head. Hmm. We'll uh, carry out the plans just as we made them. You arrive in Fairview by stagecoach on the 14th. Posing as your Uncle Ben. Right. And I'll leave the small safe in the bank unlocked. And the $2,000 in paper money will be there waiting for you. Carmody, I want more money. You want... More? Yeah. You've stolen around 20000 by letting me steal two, you'll be able to report a loss of 22, and you'll be in the clear. Oh, but we, we, we agreed on 2,000. That was before I learned the bank examiners were due to show up in a couple of weeks. 
You're in a bad spot, Carmody. Unless you can cover what you stole, you'll lose everything. And you'll go to jail besides. Oh, but, but, Ben, you're not taking any risk. Dial Durkin will be blamed for the robbery. My and... price is 5000 Pay it or go to jail for embezzlement. Well, I... I'll pay. You're smart. Where'll the law be on the night of the robbery? Fifteen miles from town at a place known as Tall Pine. He'll go there expecting to meet the Lone Ranger. Mm. I suppose you've written another letter for him and signed it, the Lone Ranger? Yes, yes, here. Here it is, Benny. I'll mail it. Uh, I mailed the last one in Cheyenne. Where'll I mail this one? In Boone City, where you'll board the stagecoach. I wanted to arrive with a mail on the stage that brings you. It was a smart idea to make it look like Dial Durkin is going to rob the bank. Oh, <laughs> I, uh, I got the idea when I saw the handbill about Durkin. It was mighty smart. If you tried to make the robbery look like the work of an ordinary crook, you'd have had to blow open the safe. Yes, I, I'm aware of that. Well, now, Ben, I, I think everything is set. I'll be looking for you on the 14th. Right, Carmody. Uh... Your old Uncle Ben will be on that stagecoach. Oh. <laughs> each evening, Tonto reported to the Lone Ranger in the camp near Fairview, and each day found the Indian in his familiar place on the steps of the sheriff's office. He was there on the afternoon of the 14th, when Banker Carmody came to call on Sheriff Neely. Oh, move aside, Indian, move aside. I don't know why you redskins have to clutter up the town. Good afternoon, Sheriff. Good afternoon, Bank. Through an open front window, Tonto heard the banker and the sheriff speaking. Yeah, sit down, Banker Carmody. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> have you had any further word about that bank robber? No, I sort of expected I'd hear more from the Lone Ranger before now, but I haven't. I trust you're keeping a sharp watch on all strangers who come to Fairview? Well, there haven't been any strangers, Mr. Carmody. Of course, Indians come and go, but... Dial Durkin might disguise himself as an Indian. Well, if I see a tall, lean redskin, you can bet I'll make sure he's not Durkin in disguise. Hey, Sheriff, stagecoach is coming. I'll be right with you, Deputy. I'll be at the station. Maybe Durkin will be on that stage. I'll go to the station with you, Sheriff. I'm expecting my uncle on the stagecoach. Mm, is that so? Yes, he... He's a mighty lively man for his age, on his way to the West Coast to visit another relative. <laughs> he travels a lot. Well, I'll strap on my gun belt before we go to the station. How long you uncle be in town? Only until tomorrow. He'll stay with me tonight while the stage lays over and continue west on the stage tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go. Tonto joined the group gathered on the station platform to watch the arriving stagecoach. He saw the driver toss down a small packet of mail and heard the deputy sheriff say, I'll go into the office, sheriff, and see if any of that mail's for us. All right, Hank. There was just one passenger aboard the stagecoach, a short, heavily built man to whom Banker Carmody called... Oh, Uncle Ben! Hello there! Uh, hi, nephew! Here, let me help you out of the stage. <laughs> How was the trip? <laughs> I've seen worse. <laughs> Sheriff, this is my Uncle Ben Carmody. Uh, howdy. Welcome to Fairview. Thanks, thanks. Glad to know you, Sheriff. Uh, here's your bag, Mr. Carmody. Uh, thanks, driver. I'll take it. Oh, uh, what time do you leave here? Uh, Six o'clock tomorrow morning. I'll be on hand. Don't leave without me. <laughs> I'll be looking for you. Uncle on, Ben, boys. why don't you stay in Fairview for a while? There'll be another westbound stage next week. No, thanks, nephew. I hanker to reach the coast as soon as possible. Uh... Now let's go to your place. It's right across the street next door to the bank. See you later, Sheriff. Right. So long, Sheriff. Hey, Sheriff. Oh, yes, Hank. Any mail for me? Yeah, one letter. It's from Boone City. I wonder who it's from. I don't know anyone in Boone City. Yeah, neither do I. Hank, it's signed the same as that other letter. It's from the Lone Ranger. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue. As the sheriff read the letter signed the Lone Ranger, he lowered his voice. But Tonto, by shifting his position slightly, could hear the lawman saying, He says, I'll help you set a trap to catch Dial Durkin if you meet me at 11 o'clock on the night of the 14th at Tall Pine. What? The 14th? That's tonight. That's right. Are you going to Tall Pine? You bet I am. Early that evening, Tonto joined the Lone Ranger in camp and told about the arrival of the man from the east and the sheriff's receipt of the second fraudulent letter. The Lone Ranger listened carefully, then said, Do you know if the sheriff plans to go to Tall Pine tonight? Ah, him tell deputy, him go. We'll be there early, Tonto. Maybe we'll find the man who's writing letters and signing them, the Lone Ranger. The familiar landmark known as Tall Pine rose from the top of a hill. Near the base of the old tree, a number of big boulders provided concealment for the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and their horses. The masked man and the Indian waited over an hour in the darkness. Then, at 11 o'clock, they heard a horse approaching. Musabi, yes. someone come. It's too dark to see whether it's the sheriff or someone else. Oh, it's bad. There's no moon tonight. That sheriff's voice. Stay here with the horses, Tonto. I'll talk to him. All right. Oh, Sheriff. Huh? Yeah? Where are you? Here. I've been waiting for you. Oh, you were behind that rock? Yes. Steady, easy. I reckon you're the Lone Ranger. By Juniper, I've sure been looking forward to meeting you. I got your letters. Uh, Sheriff, I haven't written any letters to you. You haven't? But I got two of them. Say, are you the Lone Ranger? Yes. Well, if you didn't write to me, why are you here? I heard about both of the letters you received and came here in the hope of finding out who wrote them. Moreover, I wanted to tell you that Dial Durkin is in the Cheyenne jail. He is? I wonder why Marshal Green didn't tell me. Durkin was jailed after your visit to the Marshal. How in tarnation do you know I visited the him? The Marshal told me at the same time he told me about the letter you'd received. Oh. Did he tell you what the letter said? Yes. I don't savvy. Why would anyone write me letters like that? That's what I'd like to know. If Durkin's in the Cheyenne jail, he can't very well rob the bank in Fairview. No, but someone else can. Huh? Someone who wants Durkin to be blamed for the robbery. Why, Juniper, that's right. But hold on. Why did that mysterious letter writer tell me to come here tonight? I can think of one good reason. Why? To get you out of town. For what? While the bank is being robbed. Well, if that's what the critter had in mind, he's due for a surprise. I suspected something of that sort and left the deputy on guard. Good. Yep. He's patrolling around the bank with orders to keep moving so he can watch both the back door and the front. But just the same, I'd better get back to town as soon as possible. I don't know. I'll go with you. Bring the horses, Tonto. Ah. Six alive. I've heard about your Indian friend. Ah, you see me plenty of times in past few days. Horse down. Horse down. I have? Well, I don't... Uh, me sit on steps in front of the office. So you're that Indian. Well, of all... <laughs> well, a man never knows. Ready to go, Sheriff? Yes, sir. He... Easy, steady, big fella. Come on, sir. Get out. <laughs> It was long after midnight when the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Sheriff Neely reached Fairview. They turned into one end of the main street and saw a crowd of people and a number of torchlights and lanterns in the street some distance away. Wait, right in. Hold on. Oh, 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 oh. Something's going on. Uh, crowd in front of bank. That's right. Maybe the robbery. I'm not going there, Sheriff. My mask would cause too many questions. But if the bank's been robbed... I'll stay out of sight behind the buildings. I'll learn what's happened. You better go on alone. What about Tonto? You join the crowd after you're there. Whatever you say. Get up here. Come on. As he rode, the sheriff looked back and saw the Lone Ranger guiding his horse toward the rear of the row of buildings on the same side of the main street as the bank. Then the lawman looked ahead. Banker Carmody and the deputy stood in the crowd near the bank door. Seeing the sheriff, the deputy cried out, Oh, here's the sheriff now. It's about time. Oh, hold it. Oh, uh, who? Well, Neely, where have you been? Yep, steady. <laughs> I had business out of town. A fine thing. The bank's been robbed. The bank was slugged. And Dial Durkin did it. Now, hold on, It's true, Sheriff. The only polecat got away with it. How long ago? Less than half an hour ago. I left you on guard, Hank. How did it happen? Dad read it, Sheriff. I don't know. I kept going around the building as you told me to. Checking first the front door, then the back, and... A lot of good that did. Well, someone must have crept close behind me somehow and cracked me on the head. I remember seeing stars and the... Next thing I knew, I was lying on the ground near the back door. 
And the banker was throwing water on me. How'd you find him, Mr. Carmody? Very simple. After my uncle went to bed, I went to the cafe across the street for an hour. As I came out, I noticed a dim light inside the bank. Very cautiously, I unlocked the front door. And then I saw a man crouched in front of the open safe. By the light of a candle placed on the floor, he was putting money into a cloth sack. And, Sheriff, he was smoking a cigar. Quiet, Hank. Let Mr. Carmody finish. The thief saw me. Uh, fired once, then ran out the back door, which was wide open. He dropped the cigar. I drew my gun, ran after him. I fired several times, but he got away. He was long-legged and ran like a deer. Which way? Straight to the woods, about a hundred yards behind the bank. He had a horse hidden there. I heard him right away. Then near the door, I saw your deputy on the ground. Tied, gagged, and blindfolded. Well, I was slugged from behind, Sheriff. I didn't have a chance. Mr. Carmody, you say the thief's long-legged? Yes, he's a tall, thin man, and he didn't blow open the safe. He unlocked it by dialing the combination. And we found the cigar he was smoking. He must be Dial Durkin. Do you know how much was stolen, Mr. Carmody? The safe held $25,000, and it was cleaned out. Well, I'll go inside and look around. You were warned that Durkin would be here, Sheriff. For the life of me, I can't understand why you didn't stay in town. Later that night, Tonto joined the Lone Ranger in the woods and reported all that Carmody and the deputy had told the sheriff. He finished. Sheriff, look for tracks behind bank, but night, plenty dark. I saw lanterns behind the bank, Tonto. Uh-huh. We try to see tracks with lanterns. But ground, plenty hard. From the report, the robbery sounds like Dial Durkin's work. But him in jail. There must be tracks we can follow, Toto. But there's little we can do until dawn. Uh, me tell, Sheriff? Yes, tell him we're going to try to follow the tracks of the thief at daybreak. And we'd be glad to have him with us. The stagecoach left town at daybreak with one passenger. And a few minutes later, the sheriff and his deputy joined the Lone Ranger and Tonto at the edge of the woods. Oh, 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 oh. I sure hope we can find the tracks of that thief. According to comedy, he ran here in a straight line from the back door of the bank. That's right. And he had a horse waiting here. Several townsmen heard him right away. Here are the tracks of the horse. Sure enough. And here, where him run from bank. Yeah, I see the tracks. Ground here in the woods is softer than it is in the open. These footprints were made by low-heeled shoes, such as an Easterner might wear. Him plenty heavy man. Notice the length of his stride. No tall man would take such a short stride. Carmody said he was tall and lean. Then Carmody's eyes were playing tricks. The man who made these footprints is short and heavy. He wore low-heeled shoes. Him savvy. That sound like Banker's Uncle Ben. It sure does. You described him to a T. He's the man we want to talk to. It's too late. He's gone. Gone where? He left town a few minutes ago on the westbound stage. Well, I'm going after but him. But, mister, you... Easy, city, big fella. Come on, Silver. Sheriff, look at that masked man travel. Well, don't stand there looking at him. we got to follow him. Right, easy, easy steady, boy. Come on, get him. Get him up. Just come on. Fighting like the wind, the Lone Ranger dashed along the stage trail, far in advance of Tonto and the two lawmen. Come on, Silly! A guard riding beside the driver of the stage looked back, then shouted, We'll be chased by a masked man! An outlaw! Get up there! Get up! I'll open fire on the critter! Did you get him? Oh, he's too far back! That's the banker's uncle. He's open fire. I'll get the pole cat. Oh, what happened? Uncle Ben's hitting the gun hand. Bring him. Stop that stage. Stop that stage or I'll open fire. All right, I'm stopping. Whoa, oh, whoa oh, there. Whoa. Oh. Oh, oh, easy, steady. Don't shoot, mister. I'm not going to shoot, but keep your hands up. We got nothing worth stealing. It's your passenger I'm after. Easy, steady, big fella. One rape pole cat. You busted my hand. Get out of that stage. What do you want of me? The money you took from the bank. Who says I took any money? Come on, out. Oh, you wait. You'll be jailed for this. The sheriff's on his way. Make your complaints to him. Hey, he's right. Here comes the sheriff and his deputy. And the engine. Let's see how old you really are. Uh, look out. A wig. Hey, the old man. Well, he's not an old man. Why, you ornery. Let's see how much cash you're carrying. Oh, 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 sheriff. Oh. Sheriff, this masked man's trying to rob me. I doubt that. What's the idea of wearing a wig? Look at this, Sheriff. Uh, give me that. That's my money. Brand new paper money. Looks like we've got you for robbing a bank. Your footprints will convict you. But, 
My footprints? Yes, your footprints. Oh, that fool and his slick plans. Well, listen, I'm not going to jail. I'll talk. I'll turn state's evidence. I'll tell you where to find the crook who stole four times as much as I did. Get Banker Carmody. He's your real oh, crook. Banker Carmody. Carmody. Is he the one who wrote letters and signed them, the Lone Ranger? Yes, he stole from the bank and lost the money with bad investments. He hired me to cover for him before the bank examiners came. Well, Sheriff, now it's up to you. Yep. We'll take it from here, mister. Hello, we'll be on our way. Goodbye. Adios. 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 Come on, Phil. Get up, scout. Sheriff, I thought that hombre was a highwayman. Highwayman? Oh, no, driver. He's the Lone Ranger. Adios. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's drama was written by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace 